What's up guys? Welcome back to another episode here at Laser Everything where today we're going to be doing some 3D height map laser engraving using Lightburn. I hope you're ready because we're getting started right now. So I'll be doing this with my fiber laser today, but the fundamentals first. A 3D height map, you're basically taking a very special grayscale image. And I say that because a lot of people ask, why can't you do this with a normal grayscale image? I wanna do this with my face, or can I just take my portrait or something like that? Well, you can and you can't. Your expectations should be limited when taking a normal grayscale image because what you're essentially doing is you're taking an image that is associating color to the grayscale or uh, a tone to differentiate shading in the image. And you're using a system that is designating a depth instead of a color or a tone, um, or even a texture in some cases. So uh, with a height map, you're taking everything from white to black, and in the case of Lightburn with 8-bit color depth, you, you have 256 layers of gray to work with. So if you have a, a grayscale image with a medium gray, that's going to be halfway between your highest layer and your lowest layer with a maximum you know, detail. So it, it's not really as simple as just taking a normal grayscale image and, and running it through as a 3D height map. You'll get a result, but in a lot of cases, it's not gonna be an ideal result. We're gonna walk through the process of how I would basically take a, an STL file or an object file, uh, commonly used with 3D printing, and we're going to go through a little process to get a height map. And from there, we're gonna jump into Lightburn and we're gonna engrave it like a height map. So let's get started. First step, we're gonna go ahead and identify which STL or object file, 3D design file we wanna work with. So let's go ahead and locate a file. Now, this is uh, the file that I found that I, I really like, and the reason why is it looks like an awesome little pumpkin head. Now, I found this on Thingiverse. Uh, Thingiverse is a great platform where you can pick from 3D files from across the community. Lots of people have graciously uploaded files. Some are free, some are paid, and some come with commercial licenses and some don't. So be aware of that and be cognizant uh, of the files that you're working with. You don't wanna sell anything or redistribute anything that you don't have the permissions to. So in this case, this is made by Minishev, updated or uploaded on the 12th. And we're just gonna double check. And I see the license is Creative Commons, attribution, non-commercial, share alike. Now, if you click on this, it's going to tell you exactly what's allowed and what's not allowed. So attribution, give appropriate credit and provide a link. So we'll do that and non-commercial. So we will not be selling this. And if we modify it in any way, uh, we need to follow the rules on distributing the contributions under the same license. So in any event, we're gonna go back here. So you'll notice uh, the face is pointing straight up. And in my case, or in our case, that is ideal. So the tool we're gonna be using has three primary options for picking a way of viewing the STL file or the 3D object. And it needs uh, an orientation to look at the file, either from the top, from the front, from the side. It needs to be able to look at it almost like it's taking a picture. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and download all the files and I'm going to show you the next tool. Okay, so we're now moving on to essentially step two. Now what this is, is uh, an SDL to PNG converter, and it is under the Fenner 75 GitHub page. So essentially the, this person has made a tool for us. Generally this is used a lot for CNC, but we're, we're kind of getting away with it in the laser engraving world here because it functionally uses the same information. We're taking a 3D object and we're converting it into an image format that Lightburn can understand and instead of it being a typical grayscale image that we can use to differentiate colors in an image and shapes, we're going a step further than that and we're using it to generate layers, essentially. And it's going to form depth as we start to engrave down each of those layers. So, I alluded to this before, but we need to pick an orientation or a, essentially a viewpoint 
that this web tool is going to look at the object from to determine uh, what the image source is going to be, where it's looking at it from in the digital space or in the 3D space. So we're gonna be looking at it from the top because we already determined that the face, what we want this height map to be focusing on, is already pointing up. What I'm going to do, um, we don't wanna to go too crazy with the resolution because if we do, it likely won't give us a complete uh, image if we go too crazy, but I'm going to double this to uh, 2048. I'm not going to bother with depth offset right now, but feel free to experiment with that. It adjusts the, the height point from which the, the photo is taken or where the engraving is going to begin. Your first time using this, I would probably not use it the first time. Um, you can run it a second time with a depth offset just to compare if you'd like. And then we need to open up our file. So we're gonna go to our desktop and we're gonna go to our pumpkin file and we're gonna open that up and it's going to automatically start running uh, and starting to convert this. So it already generated an image and it's working on completely loading that up for us, lines by lines. There we go. Now um, we have the file loaded up here. So all we need to do now is save it to our desktop. So we need to get it into Lightburn essentially. So we need it on our computer now. We could copy it, um, I'm gonna save it. So that way I don't have to generate this again if I ever wanna use it again. So I'm just gonna save it to my desktop and it's saved. So let's go ahead and jump into Lightburn now. Okay, so we are now in Lightburn, so we can move on to the next step. We have our image saved from the STL to PNG converter. So next thing I wanna do is I wanna drag that image that's saved onto our desktop and we're gonna drop that right into Lightburn. I'm just gonna scale it down from the corner to a little bit more of a manageable size. And first thing we wanna do is open up the layer settings. We're gonna double click on that layer. And first thing I'm gonna see is we have it set to half tone right now. These settings aren't really what we want. I'm gonna go into my library. I actually already have a setting set for this, 3D coin. I'm gonna go ahead and assign it now, mind you, these are for a 100 watt fiber laser with a 110 lens, so it's not likely to be ideal for everyone, but these are the settings that I'm working with here. 1900 speed, 75 frequency, 23 power, 200 Q pulse. And these, I'm not really entirely fine tuned with, so take it as a, a starting point, if you will. But one thing you're gonna notice is I have it set to 3D sliced. Now, if you use any of the other options, you might get a great result, but it's not going to function the same way as a 3D sliced engraving would or a height map. So we wanna make sure we're on this setting. This will only work for images. So it has to be an image. Next thing is the number of passes. So I alluded to this before uh, when we discussed uh, the number of colors that are present in an 8-bit color spectrum, essentially. So you have everything from white to black. Now imagine there's another 250 some odd colors in between those. So each of those is assigned a depth. So let's say you're working with an off-white, well that might be 10 layers deep and then it stops engraving at that portion. So maybe the this upper eyebrow area of this pumpkin is gonna be stopping at layer three or four and further down the brow here is gonna be like 20 or 25 and around this edge is going to be more like 40 or 50, and the inner eye socket here off to the edge where it's darker might be 60, whereas the inner socket here in the middle of its eye is going to go all the way through to the last layer. And if you set this to 50, for example, or 20, what you're doing is you're taking the range of color in this image and you're compressing it down into less and less and less passes. So you're going to get less and less definition and detail in the image. So what I suggest, at least while you're starting out, is always go with 256 passes. You can't really start with one number and, and do more as you need it you're not going to get the same result because it's going to duplicate the first several layers and you're not going to get the definition and detail that you want. It's kind of like printing two different images 
at different points on top of each other. So again, I suggest starting with 256 passes. If you go less, again, you're compressing the details into less layers, which means you're going to get less definition because you're not engraving just a normal image. Your definition is coming from the physical removal of material, not from a printed surface level engrave. Another factor is, if you're not getting the type of definition you want, if you're working with a, a smaller wattage laser or a lower wattage laser or a large lens and you're maxed out on power and you're just not able to dig very deep into the material per layer, you could try doubling this to 512 or more layers if you had to. And what that would do is it would essentially duplicate each layer in order the way it's supposed to be engraved and it will give you more of an opportunity to remove more material. Another note with that is you're going to be limited by your lens, so don't try and dig several millimeters into material without the expectation of you might run out of focal range out of your lens. So again, you're working with a lot of different aspects and limitations within this, it's a lot to keep in mind. So just for basics, I stick with 256 passes to get my baseline full detail out of things, and we may have to modify this with different projects. We're gonna go ahead and move forward with this. I'm gonna go ahead and click OK. I think I'm going to resize this just a little bit. We're gonna lock the aspect ratio. So right now we're looking at about 30 millimeter by 31 millimeter, so just over an inch square. Uh, let's go ahead and expand this to 40 make it a little bit easier to see. And we're gonna go ahead and center this up and we already have everything assigned. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and send this over to the laser. And after that, we're gonna do a little science experiment. So for now, let's go ahead and do a little time lapse. With the engraving started here, I just wanted to cover once again that these settings are far from fine tuned, but are a great set of starting values if you have a similar setup and are working with brass. The system being used here is a 100 watt JPT M7 source with a 110 size lens. If you're working with a different setup in any way, there's a good chance that these values will need adjustment. Additionally, the line interval will potentially need small changes as well, since your dot size will vary based on your source and the focal distance of the lens you are using. That said, we're covering the basics and tips here, so those can be fine tuned over time for your individual use case. As things progress here, you may see what I was trying to describe earlier. Each shade of gray or color out of 256 available shades is assigned to a pass or layer. This assigns that grouping of shades, or in this case shapes, like a snapshot, to a layer to be engraved in the proper order. So as we dig, you'll see that the laser begins skipping over areas that are higher up in height where the material has already been cleared. The next layers or passes will basically have a new snapshot to engrave from the old based on what range of shades are assigned to that layer. This gives you a visual difference of why this is very different from a normal image being engraved and just being repeated 256 times. The pass count on a 3D sliced mode image should be seen as more of layers than passes. 8-bit color can carry 256 different colors, which is why we continue to repeat that number is why it is ideal for the number of passes to start with in most generic use cases. By increasing the pass count beyond that, it will begin to duplicate layers, which may assist with achieving more depth if needed. This is a great way to achieve more depth if in the case that you are limited with the power capabilities of your laser or simply like the finish you are getting and can't get the desired results on the material by increasing the power. One of the most common questions I get asked about 3D height map engraving is, can I just run more passes if I want more detail or more depth out of the engraving I've already sliced and ran or are currently running? Well, the answer is you could, but it's not really always ideal. And I'll show you why. We're gonna go ahead and run a test. We're gonna go ahead and run the same engrave with the same settings, but instead of doing all 256 passes all at once, we're gonna run 128 passes, and then we're going to run it again 128 passes in two separate engraves. Essentially, what you'll see is the layers are going to be laid down over existing layers. Now that in itself isn't a bad thing, it all depends on the artwork you're using. But what can make an enormous difference is the level of detail. As we get deeper, you'll notice that the layers are far more jagged in this case. This is an issue of forcing two levels of gray into a single layer. 
which is effectively less detail and will cause much larger stair step effects. This will occur on its own, but it's being blown up by running the engrave twice. While not always necessary, a good way to finish a coin like this is by sending it through a jewelry or vibratory tumbler. It'll help smooth out the edges of the design, any harsh edges, and help clean out any caked in grime or dust. And depending on your media, it can even have different effects, such as a nice polished finish. This is a very basic introduction and set of tips to help get anyone started with the 3D height map engraving using Lightburn. Ultimately, creativity is the limit, so get out there and do something cool with your laser. So now that we've done some testing, uh, we know that we want to do it like a nice 256 layers, maybe more, and we know how we want to do the coin, we need to do something with this file. Because as it stands right now, the square doesn't really look great on a circle coin. It doesn't really fit the, the aesthetic that I want to go for. So what I want to do, this black outline, that's our deepest layer, uh, what I want to do is extend that out so that we have kind of a matching circle contour that's going to meet up to the outside edge of our coin, and that way it, it looks appropriate. We have kind of a, a pumpkin coin at that point, rather than a coin with a, a test engrave on it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to open it in a an editor. In my case, I'm going to be using Photoshop just so that I can add a generic back background and then pop this right on top of it and export it. You can use whatever program you want. There's tons of programs out there that'll allow you to do that. And I'm sure the steps are going to be relatively similar. So uh, let's go ahead and walk through that now. So we've made it into Photoshop. So as I said before, if you don't have Photoshop, you can use whatever other editing software you want. But for my purposes, I'm using Photoshop. So I'm just gonna open a default document its default is 300 in terms of resolution or pixels per inch. That's fine for this image. And what we wanna do is we wanna generate a large black background that we can then cookie cut out basically the design we want to form fit whatever we're engraving it into. So I'm going to go over here and on the left hand side, if we right click, uh, it may show the gradient tool when you first open Photoshop. Um, if you haven't used the paint bucket tool last. But we want the paint bucket tool. We have black for our selected color. I'm just gonna make our black background. All we have left to do is drag on our design, our 3D height map. And there's our 3D height map. So you'll notice it is scaling from the left edge when we grab the corner. So if I hold Alt, it's going to scale from the center. And we just want to scale it in just a little bit so that we can have enough space to kind of form whatever shape we want around the pumpkin so that the lowest engrave point, the background, matches up to whatever edge we provide it. So this is exactly what I want. I'm just going to go here to File, Export, Quick Export as a PNG. Um, you can also just export as, wait for it to process and just export and save it. Uh, we're gonna bring that over to Lightburn now. So we're back in Lightburn. Now this is our original pumpkin. I'm going to go ahead and drag in our new one. And as you can see, we have a much bigger background here to work with. So what I can do is I can generate a circle. We'll do it on a nice tool path here. And as you can see, we can now kind of get the shape of our pumpkin that we want. It looks about right. We even do just a little bit more. So maybe we make the pumpkin a wee bit smaller compared to the circle here. And maybe I wanna add in some text, something like Happy Halloween, right? Happy Halloween. So that's an option. You can curve that in and make that a whole lot smaller. You could do something like that. You could do a year. So maybe you do coins for your neighborhood for Halloween, something like that. I'm just gonna go with the 3D engrave for today. And to me, that looks about right. Maybe a little smaller. So if you've been following the crash courses that we do on the channel, you'll know that you can apply a mask to an image. So we have our image and I'm gonna shift click and we have both of these selected and that enables the apply mask to image option. And when we do that, we get kind of our little cookie cutout. 
Now, if you aren't sure where you want this to land, if, if you're not sure with everything else in the background, you can still move the image around by deselecting everything and just grabbing the image. So depending on where you want to place it, you can do that. When you're done, you flatten image to mask and now it's all one piece. So we now have kind of our form fit coin that we want to engrave. Now we just have to size it for the size coin that we're engraving and we can run it on the laser again. So in our case, the coin is about 35 millimeters on the inside line. So I'm just gonna scale this down. We have the lock, I'm gonna go ahead 35 and we already have it centered up nice. So I think we're good to go here. So I'm just gonna send this over to the laser and we're gonna get engraving. So we're over at the laser and we can see that while we're framing, we're getting a square. There's not really a way around that when you're framing an image because you're, it's always going to give you a square, at least the way everything's configured now. So let's go over to Lightburn again and let's talk about how to fix that. So no matter if you're on bounds, hull or contour right now, you're going to get this square outline. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to generate a circle on a tool path I'm just going to find the center of the circle and I'm going to hold control and shift. Control allows you to move from the center and shift keeps your dimensions or, or rather the ratio of height and width the same to each other. So if you're resizing something or if you're clicking and dragging, it keeps the dimensions the same essentially uh, in terms of like a ratio. We now have a circle that follows more or less the same path as the outside of the line here. It is going to look a little weird, uh, partially because it's kind of snipped off uh, little portions and pixels to make a curve for a photo, but we can't really work around that. And that's okay. That's part of the reason why working with a ridge inside of the edge of a circle or a coin uh, can be helpful because it kind of hides some of those details. So I now have a circle to assist in my framing and it matches up to the same size, 35 millimeters height and width to our image. So I'm going to use that. I'm going to select that outline now to frame with. So let's go back over to the laser. And if I frame now, you can see we get a circle. So I'm gonna go ahead and frame that up. And another thing you can do while you have your framing window up, if you use the arrow keys on your keyboard, you can kind of get it into a rough area. And if you hold shift, it's going to get bigger, as you can see here, bigger jumps, smaller jump. If you hold control, it's going to be smaller. And if you hold shift and control, it's going to be even smaller than that. So we can kind of get it into the ballpark here. We can go back and forth to the laser and just make sure we're in the right ballpark. Then we can get laser in. That's it for this episode, guys. I really hope you enjoyed the episode on the 3D height map engraving for Lightburn. 
If you really enjoyed the content, smash that like button, get subscribed, and consider checking out the Laser Master Academy. It's the number one way to support our entire team, what we do every day, and we couldn't do it without the awesome members at the LMA. If you have questions, consider joining any of our communities. They're all linked in the description, Discord, Facebook, or the Laser Master Academy. It's also a great way to connect with other people in the community, ask questions, get answers, and get help. Hope you all have a great day, and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.